I was up late one night and I heard God saying, Cease.
he continues to take us where he wants us to be. And I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for my journey. I am thankful for my journey. I want to thank God for Pastor McAfee again for making this golden opportunity affordable for us. And certainly it has been a joy in being here to hear the wisdom that falls from his lips and how God has blessed him and to see the ability that God continues to give him annually yes. to be the pastor, the shepherd, the leader that he is. Yes. And you ought to be excited as well as appreciative to God yes. that God cared enough to send you the very best. He is one that can pastor and one that can preach. Well, you know, you got a lot of preachers that can't pastor. And you got a lot of pastors that can't preach. But you got one that can pastor and preach. Why don't you stand on your feet? Let's celebrate him tonight. We thank God for him. Give God praise for him. Come on. This is your leader. Your encouragement. Come on, let's bless God. Come on, bless God for it, will you? Oh, come on, give God praise. What a wonderful journey. Then we thank God for the McAfee again. McAfee, thank God for all of them, all the preachers and pastors who are here who have been sharing uh, this week, and to all of you who have received me again this year, thank you for coming as I share my convictions on Christ. Uh, on this last night, I want to um, share with you from Mark chapter 5. It is familiar but fresh. Amen. So I ask that you keep your Bibles open and let's see what God has to say to all of us tonight. Mark chapter 5. Verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. And when she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who is this that touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. The Bible says, And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. He says unto her, go in peace. You came in pieces, but go in peace. And be whole of thy plagues. I want to talk about he's pushing you towards your exit. Tell your neighbor he's pushing you towards your exit. Tell your neighbor like you mean it, it's enough of that. That's all I'm trying to say to you, it's, it's enough of that, it's enough of that. Hallelujah. Ooh. 
Some roads that we travel, though they may be frustrating because of the land, we find now, though sometimes God forces an exit, we must understand sometimes what's forced can be favorable. All of us who are on the journey who think we know our way, sometimes we mix our, miss our exit and we find ourselves traveling further than we want to travel. And sometimes if you don't take the right exit, it's many miles before you get to another exit. And especially when you're low on gas. It is best not to play games with exits. And I'm preaching to not only you but myself tonight that there are times in life well, when God sees that we won't get off on the next exit, he creates a series of circumstances where we have no choice. And somebody here tonight, that's where you are. All the stuff that's been happening in your life, it is because he wants you to get off on the next exit. It's been 12 years. There ought to come a time in your life before he forces it on you that you say, I've been traveling this road long enough. Because the reality is, it's not getting any better. Nothing is changing, same old drama, same old conversation. Am I talking to anybody in here? Same old frustration, same old stress, same old depression, it's the same old, same old. It has become daily, it has become weekly, it has become monthly, and now it's become annually. It's 12 years for this woman. Theologians have declared, uh, I've shared this with you some years before, they have declared that Mark chapter five is the home of the incurables. But what I like about it is that they make this determination and declaration before they found out who Jesus really was. Because when we see Jesus in Mark chapter five, the storm really showed up to stop him in Mark four. But the good news is he shows us that I have power over the deep in the latter clauses of Mark four. The first 20 verses of chapter five, he shows us that I have power over dementia. He shows us in this text that he has power over disease and with Jairus' daughter, he shows us that he has power over death, which is to suggest that no matter how deep the situation is, he got you. No matter if you're about to lose your mind, he got you. If you're sick in your body, he got you. And if you're at death's door, if it's his desire, he got you which is to suggest that life's common denominator is Jesus Christ. Whatever else you believe tonight, you need to know that you have a savior that can turn your situations around. But I needed to stop. I needed to stop long enough to preach to you tonight. These few feeble minutes that I will stand before you tonight to suggest to you that theologically, the text tells us a truth that we have to learn how to bring closure to what God has already closed. I preach to this side here. We've got to bring closure to what God has already closed. Okay. We've got to bring closure to what God has already closed. And the reason many of us, it look like we are experiencing unanswered prayer is because we're trying to get God to move on something he's already fixed. And so it looks like God is not doing something, but God is saying to you tonight, I've already done it. You just need to bring closure to that emotionally. You need to bring closure to that spiritually. You need to bring closure to that mentally. Sometimes you can be in another place physically, but you can still be there mentally and emotionally. 
And God says, if I'm going to get you delivered, I'm not just thinking about you physically. He says, your emotions and your mind got to catch up with where I got your body. So many of you tonight, your, your quest, it's a good quest, but many of you tonight, your, the tension of your life is he's delivered you physically, but he's saying that your mind got to catch up with that exit. He's saying that your emotions got to catch up with that exit. And I think I ought to tell you tonight, Jesus knows the best detours. And if you don't know, if you just trust him, because here this woman, she stands in the midst of lost and losing. Here's this woman, she's already lost 12 years of her life. Matter of fact, she's been bleeding as long as Jairus' daughter has been in the world. It's been 12 years. Liquid life has been leaving her body. She's dying, standing up. And somebody here, that's where you are tonight. Mark chapter 5 is your chapter because you've been dying, standing up. Uh, every dead person don't have to be in a casket. There's some dead people that sit right here before me right now. But there's no joy, no enthusiasm, nothing about the Lord will move you, nothing about whoever sings will move you, nothing about the name of Jesus will spark anything on the inside. Dying, standing up, life has been hitting you, liquid life has been leaving this woman's body. She is now in between lost and losing, and he shows her one more exit. On this particular day, he takes his time walking somewhere else, comes on a path to where she can find him after she finds herself. She says, I've got one more exit and I'm going to take this exit because I've tried everything else. Everything else has been failing me, but this exit here, I'm going to see what's up with it. Yeah. And I think all to tell you, child of God, he shows this particular woman that if you trust me on the exit, he says, you don't have to end your day like you started your day. And so here the text presents to us tonight that if he's going to push you towards your exit, number one, you have to have some transitional crisis. See, everything that happens to you is not to destroy you. Some stuff that happens to you is not only to develop you, but some stuff that happens in your life, it comes to drive you. All right, you, you don't believe me. Let's look at the text. I said transitional crisis. Look at verses uh, 25 through 27a. Listen to what the text says. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, she had suffered many things of many physicians. She had spent all that she had, and she was nothing better, but rather grew worse than when she heard of Jesus. Listen, she didn't experience hearing about Jesus until she went through everybody else failing her. And God has you on a road right now to where the stuff that you are encountering, the stuff that you are embracing, the stuff that's coming at you right now, it is transitioning you because the reality is you will never get where you need to be until you go through what you need to go through. And can I suggest to you that there are some people in your life that won't understand this transition that you're in. There are some people in your life that will probably laugh at you while you're going through transition. And there will be some people that will leave you while you're going through transition. But they just don't know that while you're going through your period of transitional crisis, God has your back. He's showing you that you had to go through this in order to get to that. Here it is, child of God. She's been traveling this way 12 years. Her awareness didn't heighten until, number one, she deals with an incurable disease. Can I tell you, every disease is not unto death. I don't know who's sick in this house tonight. I don't know whether it's cancer, heart attack, strokes, or whatever's going on in your life, tumors in your body. I came to tell you, every disease is not unto death. Sometimes he shows you that you can have the disease, but I'll keep you while you got the disease, and I'll stop the disease from getting worse. Because the reality is somebody in this room can suggest that the medicine didn't help me. They tried every test that they could try. They ran every exam they could run. They did every x-ray that they could do. They've done the MRIs, but none of that, it's been showing anything on how to make me feel better. Sometimes 
you will have situations in your life that look like it's not getting any better, but it look like it's getting worse. Can I preach to somebody here? You're dealing with some situations in your life and it just don't have to be a disease. Sometimes it can just be a dilemma. It's not getting any better, but it's just getting worse. It looks like it's never going to end. This same trouble, this same drama, this same problem, it just keeps on nagging me and nagging me and nagging me. And just when I'm about to breathe, then here comes this same problem again. It looks like it's incurable. But not only do I see in this text that this transitional crisis, number one, was an incurable disease, but secondly, it was incapable doctors. Because their methods and their medicine was meaningless. This text shows us that hermeneutically, you need to understand that sometimes, to bring it up to this day, sometimes what people tell you may have worked for them. But when you're in transition, and it deals, and it, it is contingent upon what level you're on, what they say that worked for them may not work for you. You don't have, I don't have time to go through all of the different methods that those doctors back then told this woman to try, but the text says everything that she tried, it failed, because the text tells the truth for us tonight that if we're going to come through this transitional crisis that we're in, we don't need more talk, we need to be touched. Am I talking to anybody in here? You don't need any more advice. You need God to touch your life. You don't need anybody else's hand on you. You need the Lord to lay his hands on you. Is there anybody here that can look at your neighbor for the first time since I've been up tonight and tell a neighbor you need to be touched by God? Well, let me find out, do I have at least uh, 75 people in here that's already been touched by God and you know what it means, that when he touches your life, when he touches your job, when he touches your heart, when he touches your mind, it's just something about when you touch him, but it's something great about when he turns around and touches you back. Shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, I've been touched by God. He's been putting me through this stuff because he's And when the stuff that you're going through in your life, you need to be able to hear the voice of God. And some of you can't hear the voice of God because you've been hearing everybody else's voice. You've been hearing voices from your past. You ain't gonna make it. You ain't gonna graduate. You ain't gonna be nothing. You gonna be like your daddy. You gonna be like your mama. You gonna be just like your siblings. But is there anybody here can say, I'm counseling out the voices of my And then the voices of your presence, you got haters that don't want you to be anything, but the devil is a lie. I'm getting rid of all of these voices, and I'm putting some new data in my mind. Shake somebody's hand and say, get rid of the voices. Tell them again, get rid of the voices. How do you know, man, that I'm hearing voices? Because you can be in a happy place, and a voice from your past can come through your mind, and all of a sudden, you're on the mountain and down. You can go back to some conversation that you had in your past. Some family member that never liked you no matter what you've done or no matter what you try to do. But it's all right if you get rid of those voices. He's saying, don't let what they say drive you. Glory. And God is saying to somebody tonight, Glory. you keep listening to everything else, but he says it's time to get off that exit. You don't need anybody else's advice. You don't need to know how they feel. You don't need to know anything about what they've done. When you're going to make it through this, the text says she heard about Jesus when everything else failed. But then, here's one more. And maybe, maybe you're saying the pastor, well, my issue is not an incurable disease or an incurable dilemma. My issue is not incapable doctors because I don't let nobody talk to me about what I'm going through. But all of us in here can say insufficient dollars. 
Oh, yeah. The text says she spent all she had. And when you don't know what to do, life will make you spend everything you got trying to keep the little bit you got left. Because somebody's saying, if I can just get just a little more money, I can see my way through. But somebody here can say that money is not my agent of change. I got some money, but it's not helping me through this. So God says, I've given you some broke days so you can get broken so I can make you better. Somebody here needs to understand. He says, I show you how to live broke so I can show you how to live blessed. And in order for you to learn how to live blessed, you got to have some days where your bank book was on zero so you can learn how to trust in God. And there are some people that's trying to get more money, but you're not trusting in God. You see, when God blesses you, the minimum that he asks you for is 10 cents out of every dollar. Now, that's the basic requirement. But the more you trust God, the more you hang around him, you move from the minimum and go to grace giving. Somebody here tonight. Somebody here tonight. You gave the requirement. But before he asks for anything tonight, you ought to be a grace giver and give it before he asks. And watch what God does in your life. Because God shows you that if I'm going to bless you, I have to show you that what you're trying to keep is not what's going to keep you. I'm trying to help somebody here because you can't write your check out to God because you're saying I got to keep this because my lights are due, my gas is due, but there's nobody in this house and most of you, I don't even know you, most of you, this is my first time seeing you, but nobody can say you wrote a check to God and then God turned around and let your lights get cut off. He don't work like that. God will show you that when you write to me first, he says I shake your neighbor's hand and say it's about kingdom business. I ought to have some tithers and some grace givers up in here. You ought to be making more noise than anybody else. Because you know what God can do. You know how God can bless. And he uses your testimony that I've had times that I've written my check and I didn't have because my faith has been charged tonight. Yes. And I've learned that I get, get off on this next exit of trying to keep what I got because I think what I got is going to keep me. Yes. She says, I didn't hear about Jesus until I went through these transitional moments. Now, that was her life. How many transitions have you gone through, but you're still ignoring? He wants to get acquainted with you, but he says, I've been showing you, I've been letting stuff intentionally fail. One example, Luke chapter 5, when the boys had an empty night, it was really a setup for an eventful morning. 
They had been fishing all night long. Oh, yeah. And the next morning, Jesus is giving the word, oh, yeah. and they got the unlitigated gall to be next to him, washing their nets, yeah. while Jesus is giving the word. They didn't give credence into the word until Jesus looked at some failures. Jesus found them when they were lost in themselves. Because anytime Jesus is talking, you shouldn't be watching. <laughs> Come on, help me unpack this text today. And he says, listen, I tell you what, I'm going to get in what you failed with. And he says, now, I want you to launch out into the deep because what I got for you, it took what you didn't have for you to see what I'm getting ready to do now. He says, I know you came in with an empty catch because guess what? I make what you're trying to catch. And I know they didn't get in your ship because I didn't tell them to. I'm trying to preach to somebody here tonight that when you realize he makes what you're trying to get, he makes what you're trying to catch, and it ain't going to move until he gives a word. Preach, Bill, I'm just waiting on you. He said, let down your nets for a drop. Peter said, Lord, we've been out here all night long, but nevertheless, now, if we do this, we want everybody to know at your word, this is what we're doing. We don't want to do it, but at your word. And when they let down their nets for a drought, the text says they enclose a great multitude of fish because when you take him at his word, stuff starts happening. Is there anybody here, you've got some acquaintance with God, and so I just want to make sure that I'm in the right house. Can I get at least 10 people that know one thing about God to look at one person and tell them that one thing you know? See, that's what happened. I hear, oh, over here. See, that's what happened. When you start making yourself aware to make everybody else aware, then faith charges faith. And when you come to church, you need to sit beside somebody that got some awareness of who he is because you've been going through all day long. You're going through transition. You think that the world is against you, but God somebody's hand and say you're in transition right now. Look at somebody else and tell them, neighbor, you're in transition right now. I know it's painful. I know it hurts. I know you don't understand. I know you don't have nothing left. I know it got worse, but this is what transition does. Glory. Because if it wasn't for the transitional crisis, yeah. she never would have took that exit. Yeah, that's right. yeah, that's right. They say, I'm going to try Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Number two, when you make, when you have these transitional crises, hmm. you got to have a trace of confidence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Verse 27. The text says she came in the press behind and touched his garment. And verse 28, she says, if I can just touch his clothes. Mm. Mm. Now there's no saving value in his clothes. Older preachers before our day used to suggest that he touched the H-E-M hymn, she touched the H-E-M hymn or the H-I-M hymn and all that, and she got, that. that's not what it means, no. It sounds good, but it's not theological sound. That's not what she did. <laughs> she told herself, a small piece of me tells me it can get better if I touch it. But then I had to look up that word touch. That word touch is haptomine in the Greek, which literally means to fasten oneself, and it literally means partnership. So everybody else had to let me go so I can build my confidence up to fasten myself to one person that can change my whole life.
whole life. Tell somebody you just gotta hold on. <laughs> now, now, verse 27a says she heard of Jesus, but verse 28 says she says that I can just touch him. You see, you gotta take what you heard about Jesus and tell it to yourself. I didn't come up with a different text. It's just time for you to take what you've been hearing and tell it to yourself and say, you know what? I'm going to try what Pastor McAfee said. Is there anybody here you made up your mind that I've got some confidence that if I can just get to the right place, then something is about to happen in my life. I'm not talking to everybody. I'm not talking about you got to have a lot of confidence, just a little slender trace of confidence that if I can just keep on pressing my way, now that I'm off on this exit, if I can just get to Jesus and just fasten myself to him, something is about to happen. Oh man, shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, something is about to happen. Something, oh God, something is about to happen. I'm, I wish I could get 15 in that back area over there and just holler back at me, something is about to happen. I'm waiting on about 10 more over here that can tell me something is about to happen. But wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You've got to have a trace of confidence when the non-bleeders try to block you. It's in the Bible. The press was in her way, but she made up her mind. They ain't bleeding, I am. She's supposed to be in isolation. She ain't even supposed to be in this crowd. This woman is dying. Life is over there. The non-bleeders are here. The bleeder is here. She said, you know what? I ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> and when I come to church and give him praise and the non-bleeders don't like it, <laughs> why are you up there? church every night this week, that's a non-bleeder talking. Why are you always doing this for the church? That's a non-bleeder talking. Is there anybody here, you made up your mind, you're not going to let a non-bleeder persuade you and you're about to die like you are. Non-bleeders never shout. Non-bleeders never support. Non-bleeders never serve. Non-bleeders never kill. But somebody here, the reason That's why you don't understand me. Because you're not going through what I'm going through. That's why you can talk about me and can't talk to me because you don't understand. But if you just took five minutes just to get acquainted with my situation, you will know how I feel. It's been 12 years. until some folk were in your way. Yes, sir. All I need is just one person to say, you ain't gonna make it. That's all. All I need is just try 
me. All I need you to do is just strike that match of non-productivity in my life and you're going to stir something up in me that's just going to show you what God can do. I ain't going to show off and let you know what I can do, but you're going to strike that match because you're not discounting me. You're not disqualifying me. You're saying that God is out of options. At least let me give you, let me give you one more thought, one more thought. Nobody can survive without blood. She's continuously losing blood. 12 years. Which means God kept me alive. I'm looking for about 50 in here, and I guess I'll find a runway in just a second. I'm looking for 50 in here. You've been losing and losing and losing, but the reality is God kept me alive until it was my turn. Can you look at somebody and say, neighbor, God's been keeping me alive because the stuff that was a main ingredient for my living is the main stuff that I've been losing, so that Trace 
significant because when she starts her life in verse 25, she's just a certain woman. So because of her issues, she's insignificant because she's insignificant, she's invisible. Go ahead. They said, Lord, all these people here thronging me how are we supposed to know? Come on. He said, no. You're right, there are some throngers, but this person is a puller. That word throng means to bump into. That this here wasn't a bump. Because normal, normally those that's in the crowd, I got to give them a piece of me. But whoever this is, she got so much faith. Yeah. 
And somebody here, you've been coming to church for years. And the reason nothing is happening is because you've been trying to bump. And the answer is in pull. She still got this disease, so to speak, right now. He hadn't spoke the word of liberation yet. She's still in the process. She's on this exit, but she lets her praise be greater than her pain. My time is out. Y'all done got time. Uh, Y'all done got time. Let me, let me rush. Can, can you tell your neighbor your praise got to be greater than your pain? And what the enemy will try to do, he will try to match
because she comes, as I told you earlier, she came in pieces, but for every one of her P-I-E-C-E-S, he gives her just a P-E-A-C-E. -E. Y'all didn't hear what I say. And that word peace in the Greek literally means the setting one again. It literally means what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to put you back on another road. You're going to travel another route. But the setting one again means that where I'm going to put you in this year, he says, I'm going to put you in a place where it's going to be just like nothing never happened.
might let it out. It's been a long time. It's been all bottled up on the inside. But tonight, open up your mouth and just let out a good scream. I can't do it at home because it'll scare everybody. I can't do it at work, I'll get fired. But you're in a place now, you can let it out. Open up your mouth, get you a good strength. Come on, let the steam out. Because you got the bus, but open up and let out a good strength. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. I want everyone in here to go find your prayer partner. Everyone in here to go find your prayer partner. Or if you're confident with the person that's standing next to you. I want you in columns of twos and twos. I want you to be able to face somebody. If you want to get out of your seat and go to the other side of the room and find somebody, that's okay.
to hear you've been at your breaking point. But God sent you here tonight to tell you he's going to keep your mind. The stuff you've been trying to work out, he says, I got it. He says, I got it. I got it. I'm on assignment tonight to tell you God got it. I'm on assignment tonight to tell you God got it. God got it. God got it. God got it. You hang in there. You hang in there. Don't you give up now. You hang in there.
this is our second revival. When did when did Dave come? Was that last year or this year? That was this year. God has been moving mightily, 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 mightily. And as a pastor, since I know what y'all go through because y'all talk to me, to hear God send a man here with a word to address y'all needs. And my needs. allowing God to use it. And I thank God for you all and for all of you preachers and pastors. Thank you all so much. Uh, y'all, you know I don't like to do it, but God always makes sure we take care of people. We was a little bit short. A little bit short. And I know some of y'all wasn't here for the first offering. But if y'all could get something else in your hand, look at that. Myra jumped up real quick. Thank you, could get something in your hand and put it in your hand and oh okay if you could put something in your hand and bring thank it you. Thank you. just bring it just just pop up where you at